Hi, it's me again, and I am going to continue on with Exodus. If you haven't been following, you're more than welcome to go to the previous um, videos where I started with one, um, Exodus 1, talking about um, um, brick and mortar companies, you know, um, that were all made for something. And then um, just a story of Moses and uh, Fora when God was rescuing the Israelites out from Egypt and from their slavery to Egypt. And in other videos, I explain like we're slavery to ourselves and to anything that we love more than God. And God is teaching us through the word, the power um, that he has. So again, if you wanna or go back and watch the other videos, perfect. I'm leading up to this, that's just a, a, a little recap. There's so much more um, to it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. Chapter 14, then the Lord said to Moses, oh, so now he's leading them to the Red Sea. He Now he's teaching them faith. He showed him his power. He showed him his love. He showed him unconditional love. He rescued them from the slavery. And now he's, he's um, teaching them faith. So those are like the three main things. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of, I'm going to slaughter this, so just bear with me, um, Pihiroth, between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal-Safon, you shall encamp facing by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden foreign's heart. For his heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get glory over for and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Phora and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him. So he's like still providing for him. Like, you know, he's leading them to, to whatever the plan is um, that, that, he, that God has for the Israelites. So he's leading them and they're letting him because they, he showed their pow his power. So and took 600 chosen chariots and all of the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Phora, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all four his horses and chariots, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook the encamped at the sea by Pihirath in front of baal Safon. When four drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord again. So now they're leaving. The Lord is leaving them to um, the Red Sea, and now the Egyptians are following them. They said to Moses, and we can apply, I can apply this right now to my life and my enemies, and um, I really don't know how I gained any enemies. Um, I'm learning, and I think it's ridiculous, but I know that I'm protected by God, and so you know, that's what keeps me going um, is that. But that kind of reminds me of, like, these people that are, um, that I, you know, I go through my own spiritual warfare, too, you know, because life is, it's a spiritual warfare, especially when you're serving God and when you're teaching the Word and when you're showing other people. And a lot of people don't like that. And a lot of people don't like the way that um, I teach. And that's okay. You know, that's not for me to decide. Um, eventually... I, I feel in my heart that um, it will be okay. So I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing. And as far as my enemies go, um, I, I, I just pray, I just pray daily about it, you know, um, you know, to soften their heart, to leave me alone, you know, for one. Um, and I know that that will happen eventually. So I just have to stay strong. And that's what, that's what he's telling the Egyptians, you know, like, be strong. Don't worry about it. I got you. I already showed you my power. I already showed you what I'm willing to do for you. You know, I saved you from your slavery. So, you know, there's promise and favor and blessings where he always provides. And that's what he's doing right now. So with that, with that said, um, 
Okay. So they said to Moses, it is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. And so now they're like complaining. Can you believe it? Like God rescued from their slavery and now they're complaining about it. You know, like complaining. Why did you take us from slavery? We cried out to you and the God, God came, rescued them from their slavery. They're not even completely out and they're already complaining. Can you, can you relate that to your life? I know I can't. When have you done, uh, what have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? It is not this, what we said to you in Egypt, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And, and he's showing them faith and they're backing down. You know, they're, they're complaining about their situation. You know, instead of saying, hey, you know, I'm really grateful for what you did for me and, and what you did for all of us. You know, you rescued us. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be silent and be grateful. Be still. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Like, what is your problem? You know, <laughs> It's kind of funny, you know, because, you know, you know, like the Lord is like, I've shown you. What is your problem? Why are you doubting me? You know, why are you mad at me? I, I, I did what I, what, what you asked me to do. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. Now, this is the faith. You know, this is, this is, this is faith. This is definitely faith. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in, um, go in after them. And I will get glory over for and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over for his chariots and his horsemen. I mean, how can they deny it? You know, I mean, seriously, how can they deny it? He showed his power through all of the curses of the locusts, the gnats, the flies, you know, everything at the beginning before he would, like when he was trying to rescue the Israelites. So, I mean, how can they deny his power? Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved be from before them and stood behind them. Come in between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel and there was the cloud and the darkness and it lit up at night without one coming near, near the other um, sorry, uh, the all, the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea, the dry, the sea dry land and the water, the waters were divided. That's amazing. Can you imagine? It would be like a tidal wave, you know, going the opposite direction. And then it's just a dry sea. He parted the rest on dry land. You know, that's, that's amazing. Um, and that's faith, you know. I mean, if he could do that and rescue them years and years and decades and decades ago, you know, I don't know when the Bible was, was written, but, you know, like from the, from the very first time of, of earth, um, then why can't he solve our problems? Why can't we tr trust him um, knowing, knowing his power? Um, so, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The, Egypt, the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea and for his horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And in the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptians forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic clogging their chariots wheels so that they drove heavily and the Egyptians said let us let us flee before the Israel before Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians he was saving them the Egyptians didn't want to do anything they didn't want to believe him you know they they didn't want to believe him um so he's fighting and he's still fighting for for us too sorry I have to get comfortable okay um so, 
They're like realizing it. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch your hand over the sea, let the water that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when in when the morning appeared, and as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, all of the hosts of Pharaoh had that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. That's like a tidal wave, you know? Can you even picture it? I can picture it. I think it's wonderful. Um, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great, the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. So, um, yeah, I mean, now I, it's like, oh, I have to, you know, I, I need to, to watch what I'm doing. And I need to fear the Lord as in like being thankful. But also like if I, if, if I do something, um, you know, against him, knowing his power, then yeah, he's going to love unconditionally. He's still going to to protect, you know, and be there and always provide. However, you know, just not, there's just such a bigger picture, you know, and to fear him um, is tremendous. And why wouldn't you? Like, if you were there, if you were in Israelite and that happened, then, oh my gosh. Yeah, right? Um, then Moses and the people of Israel sang the song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse, of, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea, for the Lord is my strength, my, my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father God, and I will exalt him. How can you not, you know? The Lord is, is a man of war. The Lord is, my, is his name. For his chariots and his horse he cast into the sea, and he chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down in the de depths like a stone. Your right hand, O, o Lord, glorious in Lord, your right hand, O Lord, shatter the enemies. And the, great, the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversities and send out your fur furry, fury. It consumes them like stumble. It's because like you do, you're doing right, you know, like you're doing right. So when you're doing right, then, you know, pray for your enemies. At the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up, the flood stood up in a heap and deeps um, congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand, shall destroy them you blew with your with your wind the sea covered covered them they sink like lead um, in the mighty waters who is like you O lord among the gods who is like you majestic in holiness awesome and glorious deeds doing wonders right you guys i mean it's so powerful you know why can't you why can't we just trust him you know i mean why I don't, I don't understand, and I don't understand how we cannot believe in God or how we could be mad at him. And I'm going to um, really touch base um, here in the next couple of chapters about that, you know. You stretched out your hand, and the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. Unconditional love for us. The peoples have heard... They tremble. Pings have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now, um, now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror, terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as a, they're still as a stone. Tell your people, O Lord, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place of the Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. 
For when the horses of, of Phora, with his chariots and his horsemen, went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, and the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam, the um, prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her, in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines dancing. And Miriam saying to, saying to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set, set out from the Red Sea. And they went into the wilderness. I'm sorry, I'm trying to... Here, okay. Um, they went into, or they went through three days in the wilderness and found no water. Like, three days, just think of three days, you know, Jesus rose from the dead in three days, and that's in the that's in the New Testament. But it's it's good to remember. When they came to Myra, they could not drink the water the water of Myra because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Myra. So they're there, they're safe, and they they have water, but it's not the kind of water that they want. Um, so the people grumbled; they were complaining because it wasn't what they wanted. And after everything that they did, after everything that God did for them, they were still complaining. I mean, not even, this is just the next chapter. Um, after being rescued, um, after everything that they did, you know, rescued for the enemies, they're no longer slaves to the Egyptians. Um, they're leading them away. Um, killed the enemies, you know, there's so many things, you know. And the people grumbled against Moses, say, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statue and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to, ear, ear to his commandments and keep all his statues, I will put none of these diseases on you, and I put on the, Egypt, on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. Chapter 16. They set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness to sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the land of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger? <laughs> You know, I mean, come on, why are they complaining? Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather, gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. See, you guys, we are tested. We're tested every single day. Um, every day. And there's a reason why we're tested. He could be, he's showing us his statutes, his laws, he, like what he wants for us in our life. He has a plan and a purpose for us. On the 16th day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all of the people of Israel, at evening you shall know that it was Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I saved you out of slavery, people. What more do you want? You shouldn't be eating and drinking water at all, really, honestly. You know, you should be praising him and giving all of the glory to him, fasting, showing your unconditional love for him, like he's showing the unconditional love for us. Oh, And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble, grumble against him. What are we? You know, 
what are, what are what are we if 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 prayers and blessings are being answered and we're still complaining about it you know it's like the saying um how do you say uh i don't know i don't something about how, like you're not happy with what you got so you got to have more so you go ahead and get more but then you're not happy again so you're going to go you want more it's not being grateful your grumbling is not against against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And he's testing them, and they're still complaining. And they're, they're not getting it. As soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Imagine that. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel say to them at twilight, you shall eat me and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So he's still again providing. Doesn't he do that for us? He's still providing. He's going to answer their prayers. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when he, sorry, and when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather up each one of you. As much as he can eat, you shall each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did. They gathered some more, some less. That's a test, right? So, like, are you going to be happy with the like? What are you? What are? How much? Are, how much are you going to take? But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Even of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning and it bred worm, worms and stink. And Moses was angry with them. Like, look, I got you what you asked for. And here you're not going to, you're still not going to listen. <laughs> Morning by morning, they gathered it, eat each as much as he could eat. But when the, grew, when the sun grew hot, it melted. That's like a parable in Matthew um, about the seeds on the ground. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each. And when all of the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning as Moses commanded them and it did not stink and there were no worms in it. So they listened. They were finally listened like the Lord got their attention again. And that happens to us all the time in our in our situations. Moses said, eat it today for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will find it in the field. Six days you should gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my command commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of the place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. Um, it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it.